ادع الى سبيل ربك بالحكمه والموعظه الحسنه وجادله بالتي هي احسن ان ربك هو اعلم بمن ضل عن سبيله السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته brothers and sisters in islam may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of you and bestow his mercy and blessings upon each and every one of you this evening, we're going to be talking about uh, part six. So this will be the, the, the sixth part of our series of lectures in which we are talking about the ideological attack or the intellectual invasion uh, against the Muslims and also uh, the techniques and tactics being used to spread fear and hatred amongst the non-Muslims. And one of the most obvious examples of the intellectual invasion and intellectual attack uh, against the Muslims and specifically our Muslim youth, and not only the Muslim youth but all of the youth in general, um, our non-Muslim neighbors, uh, is what we see in the public education systems, the dumbing down of our youth within the public schools and within many of the educational institutions. At one time throughout history, the United States of America had one of the best, if not the best educational system in the world. And according to recent studies by the U.S. Department of Education, 19% of U.S. high school graduates cannot read. 21% of adults read below a fifth grade level. And now America ranks 14th in education on a worldwide uh, scale, 24th in literacy, 17th in educational performance, and 54th in education expenditures. Now, in our days and times, in 2018, many American students, and especially uh, the non-Muslim youth, and also the Muslim youth as well, many American students, students studying here in America, are lagging behind, okay? Virtually all developed nations, even more than in the past, mainly because the current educational system is no longer about learning the basic ABCs nor is it really focused on performance, but more focused on grades, more focused on output, and getting our youth prepared to move out of the, the schools and move into the workforce. And these test scores that so many of these educational institutions focus on, okay, in many states and in many cities are now made public which in many times this has tra traumatizing effects upon our youth, their psyches, their personalities, their peer groups, and also the choices that they make. And test scores within the schools, they determine placement, and too often those who score lowers, lower scores in their, in their early grades, the elementary school grades, can easily be branded for the remainder of their public education years and beyond for life, for the rest of their life, up throughout middle school, high school, and even uh, maybe entering into college. And the tests that they give or that they use to measure uh, the, the output of the students possess limitations on, on what they, they mean and what they measure. You find many super intelligent uh, children experience anxiety, nervousness, and they perform poorly during tests. Yet with so much riding on test scores today in our public schools and in our educational institutions and the damaging baggage that results from lower scores and lower placements, this current system appears to be doing far more harm than good. But then, that is rarely, if ever, taken into account when the powerful few control the lives of so many. And another primary means of dumbing down our youth is through mass media, brothers and sisters. If the public is busily preoccupied with the superficial garbage 
spoon fed to the masses every single day through television, movies, music, internet, video games that all act just as effective as the most potent drug dulling the senses and the brain. Again, an enormous control over the population is achieved and maintained with so much entertainment as the modern day opiate to the masses to divert people's attention. These weapons of mass distraction easily render people obvious to see what is really happening in the world. And while using these ideological attacks and these intellectual or mind control techniques and subliminal messaging to manipulate our youth and to manipulate consumers into spending on false promises of sexual relations, on false promises of status and happiness, of false promises or, or entertainment that duly serves as propaganda along with the mesmerizing effects captivated by sports that also draw an enormous amount of money and wealth and the oligarchs have us right where they want us numbed and dumbed and even the flicker rates of television videos computers and cinema by design are all programmed to contain hidden properties that physically resonate and alter the human brain's alpha wave state and to induce to induce a hypnotic, mesmerizing, trance-like state of mind. This literally drugs and distorts the cognitive process of the mass audience being subliminally fed input that modify and shape values, morals, and ethical messages and multiple auto-suggestions that carry powerful binding effects on people's unconscious minds and future behavior. This too is another form of calculated brainwashing or the intellectual attack or the ideological attack and mind control as well as behavior control that the media as vehicles of propaganda and disinformation constantly utilize okay so the constant 24 7 sensory bombardment that the media puts on humans and upon our youth is one highly effective means of control over both the youth over culture and also the majority of the population. So, and this is the 21st century now, brothers and sisters. And m m many of the uh, American people will become brainwashed to the extent where they will give up control of their lives to the elite, to those who are in power in our societies. And the, the, the majority of the masses, because of this dumbing down, not only of the youth, but also of the general masses, it will, it will reach a point that the people are so dumbed down and confused that they are unable to think individually for themselves. So they can only repeat that which is downloaded into them by the constant repetition of what is driven into their heads by the mainstream media outlets. And in effect, people defer the task of cognitive assessment and analysis of what is most important and real to what is simply communicated and propagated to them by the media. And there are many, many uh, addictive properties of the enticing media outlets, okay? All drugs, whether illicit or legal, by their very nature, dumb down people's minds and impair their brain functioning. And when we look at, for example, prescription drugs and over-the-counter drugs, which are very commonly addictive, and they're always smothering symptoms, whether they are physical, mental, or emotional, they act as a quick escape or a quick fix for whatever ailments people may have. And currently, an incredible nearly 70% of all Americans are taking at least one prescription drug. Between the multi-billion dollar alcohol and tobacco industries and the multi-billion dollar big pharma industry, these corporate entities wield colossal amounts of power in America, buying off politicians, spending billions on advertising, oftentimes killing people whose addiction overpowers them. And to a considerable extent, so-called lesser drugs like caffeine and sugar 
also possess addictive features that also impair and endanger the mind and health if excessively consumed. And these are the things which our, our youth are being exposed to, not only in the public schools or the educational institutes, but in our communities and in many of our societies. So, brothers and sisters, we need to be aware of the ideological attack against our youth and the dumbing down of our youth, but also the dumbing down of the adults and the masses and the Muslims as well as our non-Muslim neighbors. And there's also, for those who may think that they are not being influenced by this dumbing down agenda, okay, and they have some kind of sound judgment or common sense, there's even an ideological attack being waged against them, okay? As we see now in 2018 where Americans, many of Americans have now become uh, what you want to say, non-judgmental, okay? That many people can no longer tell the difference between what is good and what is evil, what is wholesome and pure, and what is despicable and filthy. And many Americans now, they congratulate themselves for being quote-unquote nicer or more sensitive or more tolerant or less prejudiced than past generations of Americans. But we don't stop to consider how much more there is to morality and ethics than that. An America that isn't full of good people won't remain a good nation, nor will it remain strong and free over the long haul. So America okay, and our country's lack of morality has a real consequence. Okay, Not only one consequence, but many negative consequences that are capable of eventually sinking us as a, a nation here in America. And number one, which is the most obvious, is the agenda to trying to collapse and um, remove marriage between male and female. Okay, And there used to be quite a bit of social stigma attached to getting a divorce in America or having a child out of wedlock. You would be looked at uh, as somebody who did something wrong. And now in our society, that's no longer true. And consequences for society have been horrific. And although there there is some dispute about the numbers, now in the year 2018, approximately 40% uh, of marriages now end in divorce. And half of all children born to women under 30 in America are now illegitimate. Okay, three out of ten in white children are born out of wedlock, as are fifty-three percent of Hispanic babies and seventy percent of African American babies. So this is important, brothers and sisters, because children raised without a mother and a father in the same household are statistically worse off in just about every area imaginable. Okay, so. Um, the, the controlling for socioeconomic status, race, and place of residence, the strongest predictor of whether a person will end up in prison is that he was raised by a single parent. And by 1996, 70% of inmates in state juvenile detention centers serving long-term sentences were raised by single mothers. 72% of juvenile murderers and 60% of rapists come from single mother homes. 70% of teenage births, dropouts, suicides, runaways, juvenile delinquents, and child murderers involve children raised by single mothers. Girls raised without fathers are more sexually promiscuous and more likely to end up divorced. And a 1990 study by the Progressive Policy Institute showed that after controlling for single motherhood, the difference between black and white crimes rates disappear. And various studies have come up with slightly different numbers, but all the figures are grim and in the negative. And according to the index of leading cultural indicators, children from single-parent families account for 63% of all youth suicides, 70% of all teenage pregnancies, 71% of all adolescent chemical substance abuse, 
80% of all prison inmates and 90% of all homeless and runaway children. A study cited in The Village Voice produced similar numbers. It found that children brought up in single mother homes are five times more likely to commit suicide, nine times more likely to drop out of school, 10 times more likely to abuse chemical substances, 14 times more likely to commit rape for the boys, and 20 times more likely to end up in prison, and 32 times more likely to run away from home. So single motherhood is like a farm team for future criminals and social outcasts. So instead of trying to reverse the crippling damage being done to our country by the collapse of marriage, many have chosen to degrade marriage, okay? And to degrade it even further by allowing same sex marriage and same sex unions and soon to be followed by polygamous unions that will degrade the institution of marriage even further and if it's true that marriage is the bedrock of society then looking at the way things are going then our nation's house looks as though it's built on sand and ready to sink and the approval also, the approval, the acceptance and propagation of the LGBT agenda is directly related to the collapse of marriage. And now I'm going to read to you what some other um, individuals have mentioned about uh, the, the destruction of marriage and the Institute of Marriage here in America. Pat Robertson. And Pat Robertson, he's an a American media mogul. He's, um, he's a, a former Baptist minister who is a very conservative uh, Christian. And he says, he says, uh, quote, I think we need to remember the term sodomy came from a town known as Sodom. And Sodom was destroyed by God Almighty and the thing that they practiced was homosexual activity. And even they tried to rape angels who came down there. So that's the kind of people they were. But beyond that, Jesus, when he spoke of Sodom, he didn't say anything about homosexuality. He talked about just the fact that business was as usual until God decided to destroy it. And he sent an angel down there and he said to Lot and his family, get out now because I'm going to destroy this whole area. That's where sodomy came from. We use the term sodomy, and it means Sodom. What's it like? We're heading the way. We're heading that way as a nation. In history, there's never been a civilization ever in history that has embraced homosexuality and turned away from traditional fidelity, traditional marriage, traditional childbearing, and has survived. There isn't one single civilization that has survived that openly embraced homosexuality. So you say, what's going to happen to America? Well, if history is any guide, the same thing's going to happen to us, unquote. Then he goes on to say, in study after study, okay, or this is actually taken from an article which was written in the uh, USA Today newspaper, the USA Today newspaper. It says, in study after study, family breakdown is linked to an increase in violent crime, youth crime, teen pregnancy, welfare dependency, and child poverty. Marriage has already been weakened. The out-of-wedlock childbirth rate is at a historically high level, while the divorce rate remains unacceptably high. Legalization of gay marriage would further undermine an institution that is essential to the well-being of children and our society. Do we need to confuse future generations of Americans even more about the role and importance of an institution that is so critical to the stability of our country, unquote. And now I'm going to read to you what Pat Buchanan says. Pat Buchanan, he is a uh, American paleoconservative political commentator, author, syndicated columnist, politician, and broadcaster. And he was a senior advisor to President Nixon, uh, Gerald Ford, and Ronald Reagan. And he was also a host on CNN's Crossfire. He says, and I quote, in its relentless drive to overthrow the moral code that has guided Western civilization since Constantine, the homosexual lobby has moved from triumph to triumph in a few years. And what would constitute total victory for gay values over traditional values? If the tenets of the gay rights movement are true, 
the Torah and New Testament are wrong. Christianity has been wrong since the time of St. Paul, Aquinas, and Augustine were wrong. And the moral edifice by which men in the West have lived for 2,000 years was built on bigotry, prejudice, and lies. Was it? Unquote. So focus on the family founder and chairman, James Dobson. He predicted on his radio program that allowing same-sex marriage in the United States would lead to group marriage, as he quoted. And then he said, marriage between daddies and little girls. And as he said, marriage between a man and his donkey. And Frank Graham who is an evangelist Christian, he also recognized this as well when he said, quote, the LGBT agenda wants to force everyone to accept and condone their lifestyle, which God's word defines as sin. And he also said, LGBT activists are trying to hook their caboose to the freedom train and drag an immoral agenda into our communities. And he claims, he claims, he says, Satan is behind the LGBTQ rights and advocacy. This is a full-scale assault against Christianity and followers of Christ. When prayer is banned from the public square, when our president fails to defend biblically defined marriage, and he openly and zealously advocates for gay rights, when legislators rush to overrule existing laws to promote gay, right, gay marriage, when schools and courts consistently suppress religious freedoms, we know we are locked in a war against the Christian faith, not culture. The architect behind this offensive is none other than Satan himself. The scripture says that the devil, our arch enemy, is bent on such uh, destruction as possible. And he goes on. He has many other quotes as well. And um, so basically uh, what I want to show you all is that not only do practicing Muslims recognize and realize that there is an ideological attack and there is attack against traditional marriage between male and female, but also people of other faiths as well. And the people of other faiths, the Christians, are very outspoken about this. And Muslims need to be uh, clear upon their stance towards this issue because it is destroying our communities and destroying many of our neighborhoods. And the second, the second, um, the second issue we want to talk about this evening, um, how the, the 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 intellectual attack is targeted towards those who have sound intellects and sound minds, is also the the crime, the crime which is rampant here in the United States. And, you know, the, despite the fact that China and India have populations four times our size, it's so stunning that America has the largest prison population on the face of the earth. And not coincidentally, America's once sky-high crime rate dropped as massive numbers of criminals were locked away. In 2016, in the United States of America, there were 655 people incarcerated per 100,000 of the population. And according to the U.S. Bureau of Justice, Justice Statistics, 2,220,300 adults were incarcerated in the United States federal and state prisons and county jails. In 2013, about 0.91% of adults, that's one in about 110 in the United States resident population. And additionally, 4,751,400 adults in 2013 were on probation or on parole. And today, in total, that is 6,899,000 adults were under correctional supervision, either probation, parole, jail, or prison in 2013. That is about 2.8% of adults. That's 1 in 35 of all the United States resident population. So bizarrely, many people talk about crime as if it's divorced from morality. And we hear about a supposed rape culture or school shootings or the knockout game or child abuse or pedophilia, etc., 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 without making the obvious connection to morals. So 
morality and having good values and good ethics is directly related to somebody uh, committing crime or not committing crime. And we find that good kids, kids with good morals, good ethics, good upbringings, they're not raping anybody or assaulting strangers to prove they're tough or shooting up movie theaters or schools unless they are, as we, we may say, mentally ill. So kids who are taught about good and evil, what is right and wrong, okay, and, and honor, they're going to make some mistakes. A few of them will even turn out to be bad apples. However, uh, however full our prisons in the United States may be, they are not full of those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're full of those who went morally astray and lost their ethics and lost their values. So uh, we'll stop here and we will continue on to talk about some of the other uh, techniques and tactics which are being used in the ideological warfare and the ideological attack against Muslims and non-Muslims. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, guide us all and increase us in goodness. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.